guys, it's Lisa from the Stop, Drop, and Knit podcast. I'm coming to you from Long Island, New York to talk about all things knitting and spinning and fiber related goodness. And oh my goodness, speaking of goodness, you guys, I am at almost 1100 subscribers. What? This is incredible. You guys have absolutely blown me away with your support these past two weeks. Um, yeah, I mean, currently we are doing a giveaway to celebrate my milestone of 500 subscribers. And I am maybe 10 or 11 views away from hitting 1100 subscribers right now. You guys are blowing my mind with your support. Thank you so much. This is so exciting. I, I don't even know, like, I, I don't have the words to adequately say thank you for your support. Um, yeah, so really quick, before we get into it, let's just, let's just do some admin um, related to the giveaway. So if you are interested in entering my 500 subscriber giveaway, please go check out episode 10 and comment on episode 10 because that is where everything is happening. Um, yeah, I will show you the prizes that you can win in that episode as well as tell you what to leave in the comments for that episode. Um, if you are interested in entering, make sure that you comment on episode 10 because episode 10 is the episode which I will be drawing the winners from. So, oh my goodness, I, I am absolutely blown away. Um, yeah, so let's see, it is, it is Thursday evening right now. Normally, I record on a Friday, um, but I do have a lot of knitting that I need to get done tomorrow. And I was, I'm in a cute sweater. Um, you guys have seen this one before. I'll go into it in a minute. But um, yeah, I, I wore this. This was the first sweater that I completed in 2020. So I completed this one year ago in January. Um, and it was the first sweater that showed up in my year in review 2020 episode. So if you guys missed that episode, you might want to go back and check that out to see everything that I knit in the year 2020. Um, but yeah, so I, you know, you guys all know I'm working on this test knit right now and I have made a lot of progress on it. We will talk about that later. Um, so I don't know. I was I was like I could just sit down and knit tonight for a bit. And then tomorrow is normally my podcast day. Usually I sit down on a Friday afternoon. Um as long as I can have a quiet space. I do it on a Friday afternoon. Every once in a while I have to wait until like the middle of the night when people stop moving around in the house. Living with people can be so annoying sometimes. You guys, oh my goodness. Why is it so much to ask to have a quiet house to record a podcast in? I don't know. Um, yeah, but you know what? I was, I've been wearing this sweater all day today and I have a whip that matches this sweater. I have a hoe that matches this sweater. And honestly, the amount of knitting that I was going to get done tonight before podcasting tomorrow probably was going to be pretty minimal. So... I figured I was just going to turn the, po the the podcast on. I was just going to turn the camera on and do my podcast recording tonight, talk about all of the things, and then tomorrow after dropping Owen off at the bus stop, I can just settle in for a full day of like intense test knit sweater knitting because that's what is ahead of me for the next week still. <laughs> so, okay. So, you know what? Let's just get into it. So, if you guys saw my year in review video, then you know already that this is my Arbor Vitae sweater by Hohi Locatelli. Um, I will, I'll try to come like just 
there we go. That's actually a pretty good, pretty good light on that. Um, so you can see there's these little cable details and these little tassels. Um, these little tassels kind of have a mind of their own. <laughs> they kind of just, like you can see the ones on my shoulder, they just kind of stick out. I don't know, it doesn't really bother me so much. I actually think that the sweater is just so adorable. Um, this actually was definitely a stop, drop, and knit for me way before this channel even existed. Um, so let me show you guys. This sweater was from this issue of the Pom Pom Quarterly. This is issue, um, I want to say it's 20, yeah, 27, and it's from winter 2018. It does not feel like 2018 was already three years ago. I mean, how is that even possible? I feel like I only discovered this magazine and this sweater like a couple months ago. But anyway, so this is the issue that Nora Gon was the guest editor for. And I mean, this is beautiful. So the cover design is Nora's design. I might knit that at some point. I don't know. It actually, look, it totally matches my sweater. Can you guys sense like a deep teal theme is gonna be going on today? Um, oh my gosh, so gorgeous. But this is the pattern as I first encountered it. There is a glare from my ring light, but there we go. Um, this is how I first encountered it when I saw this on Instagram, on Pom Pom's Instagram feed. Instagram feed. I cannot speak tonight. And there was just something about those cables and those tassels that I just had to get going on for myself. Um, so this is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. This is my first Hohi pattern. And you guys know I've been working on the worsted boxy. Again, I'm not going to show that to you guys today because I've, I've really only knit maybe three more rounds in stockinette. And there's just not a lot of progress to show you. So that is still a very active whip, but it has been taking the back burner seriously because of my test knit. So my, um, my worsted boxy is what I work on when I am on Zoom, which has not been that much lately, but I'm starting to be on Zoom a lot more these days. So probably gonna get a bit more attention. But um, the worsted boxy is just on the back burner right now while I complete this insanely complicated <laughs> color work test knit for Katherine Clark. More about that later. So um, this was my first Hohi pattern and I'm going to insert pictures of it because I can't really stand up and get you guys a full view here. But everything about this was just an absolute pleasure to knit. For the most part, there um, this was a very easy, mindless knit. The most complicated part is the beginning. Um, all of this interesting detail happens right at the start of the sweater. So if you're looking for something really fun with a little bit of cables and some interesting construction to cast on, this is a really good choice. And then once you get past this beginning part, it just becomes a mindless knit of just stockinette in the round for, I don't know, a few days, a few weeks, a couple of months, however it, like long it takes you to knit stockinette in the round. Um, but yeah, there's a little bit of, of waist shaping that she incorporates. So you do have to keep track of, um, I, don't, I don't think that I did rounds as much as just measuring until like so and so inches to you know make some waist shaping details but aside from just a little bit of waist shaping this one is just a really mindless knit for the majority of the sweater um and then at the very end you do get to add these little cute tassels and 
I mean, I don't know. Mine totally have a mind of their own. I don't know. I can't ever get these on the side of my shoulder to to behave. They just they just want to poke around and see again doing its own thing. Um yeah, I mean, I can try to turn around for a second and that's the back. So the tassels go all around the yoke. And I had just never seen anything like this before. And my style when I'm shopping for clothes and I'm shopping for for things to add to my wardrobe, I like things that are different, but I also really like things that are very basic. So I tend, I know that I do a lot of color work knitting, but I also tend to gravitate towards really solid colors that have just a little bit of something interesting going on, whether it's the shape of the garment or something like this that just has a little bit of texture over here and then like a little party with these tassels. Um, so when I saw this sweater, it was immediately, I knew it was right up my alley. The, the yarn that I used is Rustic Fingering by Neighborhood Fiber Co. And this was my first and only experience so far using Neighborhood Fiber Co. I do have a sweater quantity in my stash waiting to be turned into Andrea Mowry's Comfort Fade Cardi, but I've not yet knit that up. Um, so this is the color Edgewood, and I just love it. Teal is amazing. This is a really deep teal that, that just has like hints of black all through it. So it's very dark, but it also, depending on how the light hits it, can look really light, and I just love it. I just love everything about this sweater. So um, if you guys are looking for maybe something with a little bit of cable detail to get you introduced to knitting cables, but not like a full on Aran cable work sweater or something like that, you might wanna give this one a try because it's really just the yoke. And then once you get past all of that, it's just a mindless knit for like a few weeks. So. so let's move on to finished objects. I actually need to go grab it from the couch. I'm gonna edit this out. I have one, I just forgot to bring it over here. Hang on. Okay guys, I am back and my hoe is, my vanilla is the new black sock that I cast on on Christmas day. So this is Knitterly Things yarn in the colorway Naughty and Nice. And this teal color is a mini that she included as an optional add-on with the yarn. And so I actually finished the first sock this week. Um, so for you guys that haven't already tuned in and seen this, this is, let me see if I can, I don't really, Probably should get some sock blockers at some point, but there we go. This is the heel of the Vanilla is the New Black sock, and it is super fun to knit. The only thing that I don't like about this pattern is that I don't have it memorized like I do the traditional like slip stitch heel and gusset. That is the one that I go to all the time. Um, but so let me just really quickly in case you're just, I have a lot of new subscribers. So if you guys have not seen me talk about this, this pattern yet, um, this is a pattern by Anna Fletcher and it's basically a vanilla sock and hence the name vanilla is the new black. Um, but what's different about it is everything that has to do with the heel she does a heel that has a little chart of knit and purl increases to create the shape of the space for your heel. And once you have increased enough for the heel and have that nice triangle shape, depending, and the chart cuts off for a few like different sizes. So I just do the smallest option and then 
you can knit either a few more rounds or a few more rounds than that for bigger feet essentially um but once you finish knitting her chart you do a heel turn and then there's no gusset you do not have to pick up any stitches all you have to do after the heel turn is just knit around in circles until you're ready to decrease for the toe and that's it i mean it's like such a different pattern from anything else that is out there so um okay about my giveaway i have been getting so many suggestions and comments for favorite heels for socks because the thing that i asked for as a comment to enter my giveaway was to leave me your favorite type of heel to knit and all right like i've gotten a lot of fish fish lips kiss heels and afterthought heels and short um, short row heels and you know all the things that I expected but then people are coming at me with like magic heel and flegal heel and a couple of other things that I have just never heard of before so I'm actually really excited to make a list and I'll probably once I make the list of all the suggestions that I've gotten I will put those together and I will leave them somewhere accessible for everybody um, just as a resource of just different options. And then I think I'm going to spend this year just going through all of the different heel suggestions that everybody has been kind enough to leave me in their comments for the giveaway. So, I mean, I just didn't know that there were so many things that I hadn't even heard of yet. So. I'm very intrigued and looking forward to just trying out a bunch of different heels this year. So thank you guys so much. Um, but yeah, so I know that I have inspired a whole bunch of you to cast on the Vanilla is the New Black sock. So I hope that you guys enjoy it. I, I think it's super fun. It's just something that is a little bit different from the traditional slip stitch heel flap and gusset is the one that I always gravitate toward just because it's just I don't know I just I cast on socks all the time for my like mindless knitting and then by the time I get to the heel I'm just I'm in a place where I just need to keep knitting and so instead of like stopping and searching for a pattern and trying something new I just go into autopilot and I just keep knitting like heel flap and gusset. And that's just my tendency is to do that. So I'm sure that I'm still going to do that plenty of times, but I definitely want to have the forethought on several different <laughs> socks to say, okay, on this pair of socks, I'm going to try this. And then on the next pair of socks, I'm going to try this heel and just, just give everything a fair shot. So, because maybe there's a favorite heel out there for me that I haven't found yet and I just don't know that it exists. The only way to find out is to just kind of knit everything and see where it leads me. So, um, that being said, the slip stitch heel and gusset fits me super well. So that is, that is probably always going to be something that I knit, but definitely want to give everything else a shot. Um, okay, so this is the only FO that I have, and it's really just a hoe, but I do have, I also, in theater, was able to, during my son's theater rehearsal, was able to get this much of a sock, of the second sock knit, so I do have this as a whip. No second sock syndrome here, I'm just, I'm just you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. Normally I move through my sock knitting much more quickly, but absolutely every opportunity I get has been dedicated to completing this test knit. So, okay. I guess, I guess you guys want to know where my test knit is at then, don't you? Probably. All right. I'm gonna dig that out for you. Okay guys, so 
I have made some good progress on my test knit. Thank goodness. Originally, this sweater, the deadline was today. So today is Thursday, January 21st. And today was the original deadline for having this sweater done. I'm sure that my, my longtime viewers, I mean long time, I've only been podcasting since November. So I don't know, most of you guys are probably new. So um, really quickly, I signed up to do this test knit at the end of November. I ordered my yarn on December 1st. My color work yarn from Brooklyn General, from Katherine Clark herself, came basically two days later because she's in Brooklyn and I'm on Long Island. And so as soon as she shipped it, that basically arrived the next day. But as part of my being mindful of my budget, I couldn't justify ordering also the main color yarn from her because what she used was very beautiful, um, but not as friendly for my budget. So I searched and searched and searched for a main color yarn that I thought would go well with the color work yarn. And I found an amazing yarn, um, Wisconsin Woolen Spun from Brooklyn General. And that is this one right here. And so in the color oats, so this is the main body of my sweater. And I ordered it right away, December 1st. And it got kind of the unlucky post office delay. It, it just, it got trapped. It got stuck in Wisconsin for like two weeks. I mean, it was coming from Wisconsin. She shipped it right away. It got trapped in Wisconsin. My yarn was held hostage for like two weeks. And then even though it was sent priority, I didn't actually get that yarn until two days before Christmas, December 23rd. And then of course at that time it was Christmas and there was just a lot going on. So um, yeah, so I didn't get to start the sweater until like the tail end of December because my yarn took forever to arrive. And I am not complaining about the postal service in case anybody is wondering, I am very appreciative of them. It was just unfortunate that this is a really, really complicated test knit that is three colors and it's a slow one. It's, it's really, really slow. Originally, the deadline was gonna be like, December 29th and when she asked all of us about that deadline um I guess enough people said eh, that's kind of right in the middle of the holidays and this kind of looks like a big project and so right from the get-go she pushed it off until January 21st which was great if I had been able to cast on early December this would be done but that's not what happened and you know life happens and you you just have to roll with it and so i finally got to cast on at the end of december and i am a very slow knitter when it comes to three color stranded color work i am quite quick at two colors i am super speedy if we're just talking stocking up but of course that's not what we're doing um, yeah, so, I mean, when I signed up, given what the deadline was, I had every confidence that I was going to be able to complete my test knit in enough time for Catherine. And then the postal delay happened. And then once I got started knitting, I realized, I was reminded because it had been over a year since my last three color, color work sweater, I was reminded at how slow I am at knitting with anything more than two colors. So this is not just a color work yoke sweater. This is like full on the whole body is color work. It is beautiful. It is amazing. 
The sleeves have color work on them too. All right, so most of you guys have probably been with me and have heard me say all this before. So I am excited to show you my progress. <laughs> <laughs> and no, I would not have completed the sweater in time had it been due today. Thankfully, one week ago, um, Catherine emailed all of us for an update and suggested or proposed the option of an additional week. And we all jumped at that. I think like one person has her sweater finished and... That's not me. So kudos to whoever you are who has your sweater finished. Um, okay, so without further ado, my Noctuaday sweater progress. My Noctuaday sweater by Katherine Clark. I now have this much done. So, oh, this is the back actually. I know that because of this little symbol right here. So this is the front. I should show you guys the front. It's the same, basically. Um, so this is the progress that I have made. I think last time I showed it to you, I was about here. So in a week, I have managed to get done the whole rest of this. And okay, that probably doesn't seem like that much to some of you. For others, it might seem like a whole hell of a lot of knitting. And let me just tell you, it's a whole hell of a lot of knitting because... <laughs> Oh my goodness, these moths are beautiful. These moths are so beautiful, but they are so slow. So I just today finished this fourth moth here. Um, I'll try to come closer with that. So that's moth number four, which you guys have not yet seen. And this is the completed moth number three and then the second moth is that one and then the first moth so you can see the moths progressively get bigger um it's like an a-line design so in between every rounds of every section of moths you do increase a little bit and the the sweater is going to go out like that um i am very very, 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 very super excited that I finished the moths. It has been, it has been a lot. Um, the, I'm not done with the body yet, and obviously there's not yet any sleeves on this. Um, but the little bit that I have to do, I have to do maybe eight more rows of color work on the body but it's just two colors so i'm easily gonna be like when i turn off the camera after this podcast i'm gonna sit down and knit and i'm easily gonna be able to knock that out tonight um but the hem is actually more knitting than you would expect from a hem i don't know if i can really say too much about the hem but there is like the traditional ribbing part of the hem and then there is beyond that so like that this would be like the bottom of the sweater and then she has the same amount of inches of the ribbing in like regular stockinette and it's like a folded up inside hem so the hem is a bit of work still but i think it's it's at least at least after I get past the ribbing, which is it's two color ribbing. Once I get past that, I believe that the rest of the hem is stuck in a, in a single color. But it's still, I mean, we're still like almost 300 stitches around. So it is still quite a bit of knitting just to finish the body. And then I have not just one, obviously, but two sleeves that I have to do. Um, the sleeves are worked flat, but they also have color work on them. And there is one moth on each sleeve and the moths have three colors. So I am not out of the woods yet with my three color color work knitting, but we are so much closer. I actually, I love doing it. It's just, 
the the pressure of the the very quick deadline this is maybe the fastest um test knit that i've ever done for a project as complicated as this um and it's not that it's even complicated it's not that complicated it's just very slow going if this whole sweater were in two colors it would not really be as big a deal as it is with three and actually Catherine has been re-knitting her own pattern in a two color color work version so essentially like she's knitting this whole sweater again and I guess what she's doing is like the bits that have color will just be the main, the main, I can't even talk, the main body color for the sweater. So I think that she's coming out with two options. I'm not really sure, but that would certainly be a lot faster, but it's not, I mean, it's beautiful still, the two colors that she's doing. If you go to her Instagram, I'll put it up here for you guys to check it out. Um, she's got she's got both her three color version and then her two color version on there that you can see. And they're both beautiful and they're both big projects, but something about adding in the third color is very slow. To give you guys an idea of how slow it is, I can knit four rounds in two colors for every one round in three colors. So all of the parts in between the moths have gone pretty quickly, which is why I've even been able to make any progress on this sweater. But it's like every time I got to another section of moths, as beautiful as it has been to see them emerge from their like cocoons if you want to say <laughs> it has just been the slowest process which is I've been knitting around the clock for weeks now like for like all of January I have just every spare minute I have been working on this sweater so I hope it fits I really hope it fits after all of this work. I haven't tried it on, probably should, but at this point it's like, I, I just need to keep knitting and, and turn out a sweater. It looks like it's gonna fit. It's definitely not gonna be too small, but so yeah, so this is my uh, Noctua-Day sweater progress and I think it's really pretty and yeah, it's gonna be awesome. So if you guys see, like I have random stitch markers hanging from various places on my sweater and <laughs> there's like a whole bunch on the back there. That is because um, I noticed a mistake in my color work. So every time I noticed a mistake, I would like put a little stitch marker in. So maybe I'm going to go back and duplicate stitch over it to correct it when I'm done. I figured if I didn't mark it with a stitch marker, I probably would never find it. But then the part of me is like, well, if I can't ever find it, do I really need to worry about going back and correcting it with duplicate stitch? So we'll see. We might, it might be like a against the clock kind of thing by the time, like, do I have time to duplicate stitch it really quickly for a couple of hours before I need to soak it to block it I don't know yet because I still have so much knitting to do you guys might want to see this is the spin cycle that I've been using um, they created the Noctuity colorway for this design especially um, so this is a unique colorway especially for Katherine Clark's sweater that I'm working on and I didn't know really how far into this with the different colors I was going to get. Last time I was still in like the more of this like red, it kind of repeats again. So I was more in this like red, orange, yellow section. And I wasn't really sure that I was going to get to any of these blue and green and pink 
and yellow colors. But I did start dipping into that um, on this last moth. Like you can kind of see the moths start out very um, red and yellow and green. And then like all of a sudden they're kind of pink and blue. So yeah, you never quite know what you're gonna get with Spin Cycle but it is really cool and it's really fun to use. You know what, that's gonna bring me to my next whip right now. Um, and don't worry, this is not a current whip. This is a whip that has been on the back burner while I have been doing Christmas knitting. I basically haven't touched this since before Christmas knitting. So this is not yet a UFO, but if I don't return to it soon, it will return to be a UFO. And so I want to show you guys that because it is the only other project that I have ever used Spin Cycle for. And so it also happens to match my Arbor Vitae sweater. So I just thought that today would kind of be a really good day to pull it out so that I can just coordinate all my knits on the podcast. You guys should recognize this one. Um, before I even show you. I think it's pretty obvious that I basically, I knit sweaters and I knit socks. I'm not really that great at knitting much else. So yeah, this is The Shift by Andrea Mowry. I do knit a few of her patterns. Um, have I finished a single one of her patterns? I don't think I have. I'm working on a cowl of hers and no i did i had the golden hour shawl so the golden hour shawl is the one pattern of andrea maori's that i have actually seen through completion and then i have yarn to knit like the weekender and the comfort fade cardi and the so faded no it's the yeah the so faded sweater which could also be the faded shawl I don't know what that one's called. Basically that shawl that everybody has knit. Um, anyway, I have yarn to do all of those projects. Oh, and also the Ginny cardigan. That's like one of my top, like must cast on this year projects. I have the yarn to do so many of her patterns and the full circle cowl. That's the one that I showed you guys maybe in episode two, really early on that um, I, I've been, it, that's another whip that's in danger of being a UFO. But I'm gonna finish that thing. That one is the one that I am knitting out of my yarn that I dyed in red cabbage. That was my very first experiment with natural dyeing. So yeah, so I have like, I love her patterns, but I've actually only ever knit her golden hour shawl. And that needs to change because I love so many things. So anyway, so this is the shift. And oh my gosh, you guys, I cast this on sometime over the summer. And I feel like everybody else has knit this pattern so quickly. This is why I pulled it out today. because, And this is why I'm podcasting tonight because, you know, I was like, you know what? Like my sock matches my sweater that I'm wearing right now. This whip, if I talk about it, matches the sweater that I'm wearing right now. So I just felt like coordinating with myself a little bit. I don't know. So, oh my goodness, I don't knit shawls and I don't knit cowls. I don't know why. I mean, I live in New York on Long Island. It is cold. It is very cold here. I certainly could and I should. I like them, but I've only, I mean, I've only finished one shawl and I like it. So I need to finish this, but, um, yeah, so I'm actually knitting this shift cowl out of the original colors that spin cycle that Andrea Mowry used. So, um, I think that it's this one that is leaf. So pretty. Um, and this is leaf and then this one is I think this one is is that the castle or the meadows one of these is the castle and one of these is the meadows 
I only have one label, the label that was in this one. So let me see what this says. This is the castle. Okay. So this one is called the castle. And this one is the meadows. And this one is leaf. And so these are the three. That's really not focusing so well. Let's do it this way. So these are the three colors of the spin cycle that I'm using. And I don't know, there was a day um, so many months ago, spring, sometime last spring, that um, spin cycle posted an update on Instagram that they had restocked their shop with the same colors that Andrea had knit her original shift out of. And I had never ordered Spin Cycle before. I had ogled it so many times. And I actually, when I saw this cowl, it was the colors of it that really drew me into it. So as soon as I saw that, that Spin Cycle posted that they had restocked the same colors as the original sample, I just went and I just ordered it. And it was kind of an impulse thing. And I don't regret it. I, I love this. I think there's maybe seven sections to this and I'm through two sections and I have started on the third, but I just, I don't knit on it because I have had so many other projects going on that, I mean, Christmas projects had deadlines and now I'm doing a test knit that has a huge deadline. And so, I am showing it to you guys because I intend to finish it this year. I don't know when, but I mean, I bet like it's not really going to take me that much time. I just have a lot of, you know, there's always the, you get distracted by the next new thing that comes out and there are so many things. I mean, I have a Ravelry queue full of so many projects that I want to knit. A lot of those I have already purchased yarn for. So I guess this seems like an appropriate time to plug my thread, my knit along thread for my knit your stash in 2021. Um, yeah, I have a Ravelry group that I started a week ago and I will put the name here and in the description box below. Um, it is stop, drop and knit your stash. And yeah, so basically anything anything that's in your stash counts. I I just need to knit a lot of things that I have. I have fallen off the wagon and already ordered some yarn for a few specific very specific projects. So yeah, I guess we should move on to acquisitions. Accidental acquisitions? Can we say accidental? Can acquisitions be accidental? I don't know. Yes? I don't know. Okay, so can we talk about Bernie Sanders mittens? Can we just, can we just have a moment here and I'm gonna invite Bernie to sit in with me somewhere somewhere here I don't know my husband said that he could make that happen for me so so Bernie's gonna come join me somewhere not sure where maybe he'll pop up on top of the shelf or something um yeah so you guys we have a new president and we have a new vice president hallelujah Thank goodness. Oh my goodness. So exciting. Um, yeah, Amanda Gorman blew my mind. She absolutely stole the whole inauguration for me. She, she was my moment of the uh, 2021 election, not election, inauguration. I can't speak. Um, if you guys are not knowing what I'm talking about, I mean, you, I'm sure everybody does, but go follow Amanda Gorman. 
go look up her speech. The poem that she wrote for the inauguration was so important, so incredibly moving. It was perfection. It was absolutely, she is absolutely what the United States of America, what the entire world needs right now. Um, yeah, so huge Amanda Gorman fan, huge. Um, I had no idea who she was, but as soon as she started speaking and the words that she wrote and her delivery of her poem, it, it was just absolutely incredible and very powerful and very important and relevant to what our country needs right now. Um, okay, so there was that. Um, but then, obviously, the next like favorite thing, aside from the fact that we have a new president and our first female Indian African American vice president, I mean, so many good things. But then Bernie memes, <laughs> Bernie Sanders and his mittens. Can we just appreciate these mittens? I think obviously knitters everywhere. I mean, non-knitters have been going crazy just over Bernie memes, but knitters especially, oh my goodness. The memes are just beyond amazing. They, there's so many good memes. I don't even know which ones to even try to put here. I'm just gonna have my husband insert Bernie here for me somehow. Um, but, okay, so speaking of that, obviously my husband wants Bernie mittens. And now Owen does too. He wants Bernie mittens too because if I'm gonna make them for daddy, he wants me to make him Bernie mittens too. So I kind of had an accidental yarn acquisition shopping. I don't have anything to show you because I just made a purchase <laughs> tonight before I turned the podcast on. But okay, I am also a huge fan of Vermont. My husband and I have a dream of buying a house in Vermont. We just love Vermont. We have traveled there so many times. We love going to all of the different like craft breweries there. Obviously there's yarn in Vermont. And so every time we've traveled there, we just, we come away saying, I wish we lived here. So hopefully at some point, one day, we'll actually make that dream happen for ourselves and we will move to Vermont and buy a house and live in Vermont. So, okay, so as soon as my husband said he wants the Bernie mittens, I had already earlier today seen Green Mountain Spinnery post on Instagram some ideas or an idea from what they have to offer. You know, because what is better, what is more perfect than making Bernie mittens with Vermont wool? Now, of course, Bernie's mittens are made from, what is her name, Jen Ellis. Um, I will include the link to um, an article. I think the one that I read was Washington Post. There's so many articles out there telling you about Jen Ellis and how she got these mittens to Bernie a year or two ago. Actually, I think 2016, after the first, the last disastrous election. Um, yeah, so she gifted him this pair of mittens through her daughter's preschool. Her daughter, his daughter or daughter-in-law or somebody that he is related to worked at the same preschool that she, her daughter went to. So she got these mittens to Bernie They've been a thing apparently since way before this inauguration, but they just blew up the world. Twitter, Instagram, I mean, if you guys have not seen all of the Bernie memes, either you live under a rock 
or you're just not a social media person because there's there's just no other explanation for having no idea what I'm talking about because if I know about it everybody must know about it um yeah so anyway we are huge supporters of anything that has to do with Vermont because we just love Vermont and a few years ago over the summer we took a tour of the Green Mountain Spinnery in Vermont in Putney Vermont and it was amazing um I want to say the girl that works there her name is maybe maybe it's Kate Solomon I might have that wrong but I think that's who who she is and she's so cute she's a brunette she's got like really short brown hair and she she gave us a tour of the spinnery Owen was really little he was he was maybe two maybe three I don't remember it was a few years ago but we got a whole tour and it was awesome I bought yarn if you guys saw my I don't remember which episode it was but the the sweater that I knit with Annie Lepton with the, the elephant promenade sweater that was out of Green Mountain Spinnery yarn. Anyway, so I obviously needed to obtain some Green Mountain Spinnery yarn for these mittens that my husband wants me to make him. And so I kind of went on the website and ordered some Green Mountain Spinnery yarn. So I've got six skeins coming my way to make some Bernie Sanders mittens. And I'm so excited. Um, I'm gonna link a couple of free patterns for the Bernie mittens that you can find on Ravelry below in my description box. Um, they're free. I think, I think they also might include places that you can make a donation to for one or another cause. I'm not sure. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use those patterns or use them as maybe like a stepping stone to designing my own pattern because I'll in some, insert some pictures of Bernie's mittens here. Um, obviously the one, the one that is going viral is the one where he's just like sitting and he's got his mittens and his arms are crossed and he's like that. So you get a really great view of um, the back part of the hand of his mittens. Um, but they're because these mittens are made from recycled sweaters. So what Jen Alice did was she upcycled sweaters that maybe she found in thrift stores or something. So she actually used a sewing mach machine. So she didn't knit them. She, she took fabric from sweaters and she took fleece and she constructed them into mittens. So there's the back of the hand has like a colorwork sweater pattern and then the palm of the hand is like a solid blue some people are calling it black but I mean look I'm gonna put a picture they're blue I, I don't understand why people say that it's black seems like really obviously blue to me I don't know I'm gonna make them blue so and then though there's a whole other color work section for the thumb and so my dilemma is I could just snatch one of these free patterns on Ravelry and the free patterns basically it's just all around so the the color work on this part of the hand that is like the famous part that you see in the pictures just goes around the entire mitten just for like ease of getting a pattern out there quickly and the designers, were, they didn't test knit their patterns. So they, they created the charts and they were very honest about saying, I have never knit this. I'm just offering this to you. This is a color work chart. I haven't test knit this myself. These have not been test knit. So this is basically a starting point. Um, so I don't know. I mean, that would be the easiest way is to just kind of knit the mitten in its entirety with the color work but I kind of want to make them look as close to what Bernie was wearing as possible so I don't know so I ordered six different colors so that I had that option 
of creating something very similar with the color work on the back and like a solid palm and then a different color work section for the thumb. So I don't know what I'm gonna do if I decide to get creative and try to replicate Bernie's mittens a little bit more closely to what he actually is wearing then maybe I will try my hand at putting a pattern together. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. All I know is that I ordered yarn and I have yarn coming and that makes me really happy because I love yarn. I love Vermont. I love Green Mountain Sp Spinnery. I love Bernie Sander Sanders. I love that there are memes of Bernie Sanders everywhere. I love that my husband's going to find a way to get him into my podcast. I just love Bernie Sanders. He's fantastic. The mittens are fantastic the memes are everything and yeah that's all that's all so i'm gonna make my husband some bernie mittens and i guess i'm making owen some baby bernie mittens and i don't know i've got yarn coming i might have it to show you guys next week so um all right one more thing is when I was searching on Instagram, I was searching the hashtag Bernie Mittens and I found on Etsy um, a polymer clay maker who made, he put up there that he just created some earrings and a pin and like a lobster clasp charm thing of Bernie's Mittens. And so obviously I went on there and ordered. They are all sold out now. Um, we're kind of in communication and I don't know if I'm going to have something to offer you guys, but at the very least, I am going to put a link to his shop and you guys can always reach out and send him a message if you're interested in maybe getting some Bernie Mitten earrings or like a progress keeper or something. Yeah, I, I just had to was another impulse purchase but you know I'm a knitter they're color work mittens they're gonna be earrings I'm gonna wear those babies all the time and they're gonna be awesome that's all I've got <laughs> I've got to go knit now I really need to turn off the camera and just go get as much of this sweater done as I can tonight and all day tomorrow and Saturday and Sunday and yeah if I um if I make a good amount of progress before I edit everything, then maybe I can post something in. Otherwise, um, don't forget if you are interested in entering my giveaway for 500 subscribers, which is now like 1100, head on over to episode 10. Make sure you comment there. Um, you need to leave me your favorite heel for our socks and if you've never knit a pair of socks just leave me a comment and yeah go watch episode 10 check it out um you have to be subscribed to enter the giveaway you have to leave a comment on episode 10 and if you liked this episode give me a thumbs up i am really looking forward to the next episode because if all goes well i will actually be wearing the noctua day sweater that i am test knitting when I film the next episode. It is due the day before I usually film, so if all goes according to plan and I have it done, that is what should be happening. So I'm really looking forward <laughs> to the next episode and showing you guys the finished version of the sweater on me. Okay, um, have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a happy year. Have a happy everything. I love you all. Thank you so much for all the support you have shown me. And goodbye. I'll see you guys again soon. <music>